Hello friends and I'm glad to be together again for a new episode of Conspiracy Theory. In today's episode, we'll talk about the strangest military experiments on humans. Army researchers have always tried to create a super soldier, a successful fighter, more resilient and stronger than the others, unparalleled in enemy camps. The invincible mutants in SF movies haven't seen the light of day yet, or at least that's the official version, but military experiments on humans are as real and frequent as possible. Live science shows. Among the world's great powers, the United States has always stood out for its massive investment in military research. And declassified records show that scientists have not strayed from anything, trying to push the limits of the human body. The International Olympic Committee bans everything we create. And that proof of our success, said Michael Goldblatt, a former chief scientist at DARPA, the mysterious American research agency. Infrared vision. With the naked eye the U.S. Navy tried to improve the night vision of sailors during the First World War. The researchers knew that vitamin A contained essential nutrients for the eyes and thought that taking a special form of the vitamin would change the eye's sensitivity to light. The sailors who volunteered were fed pike liver and after a few months they began to perceive the infrared rays. The experiment was abandoned with the discovery of an infrared electronic telescope. The Japanese did similar experiments on pilots and the improvement in night vision was even 100% in some cases. Plutonium injections near the end of World War II when the United States was working on the atomic bomb, scientists tried to find out more about the danger posed by plutonium. The tests began on April 10, 1945, when the victim of the car accident was injected with plutonium to observe how long the human body manages to eliminate the radioactive substance. It was only the first in a series of 400 secret experiments with plutonium on humans which were only revealed 50 years later in 1995. Espionage with extrasensory powers clairvoyance are not welcomed by scientists but the Pentagon spent about 20 million dollars between 1972 and 1996 to use the extrasensory powers of such people. They had to detect different geographical locations they had never seen before, such as bunkers or nuclear facilities in competing or hostile countries. The contradictory results obtained triggered misunderstandings between the spy agencies and the experiments were eventually abandoned. Their existence was made public in 2002. The Insomniac Soldier Sleep is one of the main enemies of soldiers, and scientists have always tried to prolong the period in which fighters can remain active and vigilant. A lot of sleep medications have been created over the years, most of them based on amphetamines. The newest of these is Modafinil Provigil, which allows soldiers not to sleep for 40 hours without feeling sick. The drug created in the Army's laboratories also reached pharmacies around the world. But the International Anti-Doping Agency put it in 2004 on the list of banned substances after the positive detection of some athletes. Interior Armor The superhero in SF movies could now be one step closer through the internal armor program developed by DARPA. American researchers are trying to transfer to humans the special abilities of animals such as the Indian goose which can reach altitudes above 10,000 meters or a sea lion that can control its blood flow and oxygen supply during diving at sea. Depth I don't accept that our soldiers can't physically outdo their enemies, said Dr. Michael Callahan, DARPA's chief scientist during a presentation. The ultimate goal of the researchers is to create invincible soldiers resistant to the harshest conditions, including extreme temperatures and altitudes diseases, chemical, biological and radioactive weapons stronger than any enemy. The Milgram experiment, known as the most important study in the entire history of psychology and the mechanisms behind human submission to authority and authority. The Milgram experiment highlighted the complex conflicts between obedience to an imperative, abuse of an absurd authority, and human personal consciousness. Held in 1961 to 1963 at the prestigious Yale University, 
The ultimate goal of the controversial experiment was to find out all the motivations in the minds of those who carried out the horrors of Nazi Germany's mass extermination camps. Most of the results and related conclusions of the specialists were downright unexpected. Were the Nazis evil and sadistic or did any of us have the seed of evil in him? Many of the war criminals later justified that they were in fact very normal people who would not harm any fly and that all they did was follow orders so they were nothing but simple tools that cannot be held responsible for their actions. After the end of World War II, many psychologists and sociologists studied and researched on all sides the crimes against humanity that took place in Nazi concentration and extermination camps. The researchers wanted to find out in the first instance whether the German Nazis were people who were driven to madness by the aggressive ideology they believed in or worse. That no group of people of any race or culture could behave as well. Abominable if I end up in similar circumstances and situations. The one who decided to put an end to all these dilemmas in the world of psychopsychology at the time was Stanley Milgram, a psychologist at Yale University. He imagined and put into practice an experiment based on the conflicts between the influence of an imperative authority, which you cannot normally deny, and the barriers raised by the conscience of each of us. Milgram carefully examined the justifications and statements of those accused of crimes against humanity at the famous Nuremberg trials. Most of the Nazi leaders indicted at the time defended themselves by claiming that they had been forced to carry out orders with which none of them would have agreed, but given the circumstances, they were forced to carry them out. The experiments began in July 1961, just a year away from Adolf Eichmann's resounding trial in Jerusalem. Milgram selected his subjects for experiments after previously printing an advertisement asking for more men to volunteer for a study that focused on optimizing learning and study techniques at Yale University. Electrical Impulses and Psychosocial Conditioning According to the procedure, each participant was paired with another volunteer, and the two drew lots to be the teacher and the learner, the latter being Milgram's students who did not deny the identity of their fellow experimenters. The key to the experiment's success was an electric pulse generator created by Stanley Milgram. The subject was then taken to a room where electrodes were attached to his arms. The electric pulse generator was calibrated between 15 to 450 volts in which the 15 volt gradation triggered a small shock the intensity approaching up to 375 volts capable of very painful shocks. Eventually organizers ruled out the possibility of the subject receiving 450 volts which would have killed him even if the trigger had been accidentally brought to this intensity. Obviously, for the safety of the subjects the triggers were never connected to electricity but the teacher subjects were never told that. Milgram was therefore ready to find out how far people who obey an order could go, whether it was to injure or torture other people often unknown. As much as he wanted to know how easy or difficult they could be to influence ordinary people to commit atrocities as had happened countless times in World War II. The volunteer participants were a tier of 40 men aged 30 to 50 whose occupations ranged from simple workers to directors of important companies and firms. At the beginning of the experiment, they were all introduced to a character from whom they were to receive orders. The experimenter had the right to ask any performers who had to appeal to their own conscience before fulfilling the orders most often absurd. This key character was dressed in an imposing gray suit and was not Milgram, but a 47-year-old professional actor who could give more truthfulness and weight to the role. Those in the role of learner had to answer various questions, and the refusal to answer or the wrong answers were punished by the teachers by triggering an electric shock in the bodies of the subjects of that learner. If out of pity or compassion, they refused to punish the other fellow experimenters than the supreme experimenter who had the role of absolute authority and came to transmit a set of five different orders entered the scene. Those in the role of teacher thus received a set of instructions printed with the following exhortations. These were, please continue, I insist on continuing. 
The experiment asks you to continue. It is absolutely essential not to give up and continue. You have no choice but to continue. Seen in the face of the relentless situation, people chose results that do not honor us and unanswered questions the results have been frightening to the fate of the human species. We can even say that this was a great failed exam for humanity. Even if it took place in a lost hall of a single university. No less than 65% of the participants in the role of teachers continued to torment their subjects with electrical impulses that tended to approach the value of 450 volts. Despite the obvious screams of pain of these people, even worse, absolutely all teachers subjected their fellow experimenters to 300 volt electric shocks. During the experiment, many subjects had bouts of panic and anxiety, and three of them went into seizures manifested by spasms and uncontrollable movements. Faced with such a relentless reality, Milgram did not want to accept the data and evidence and performed a number of other 18 similar experiments but which had the same results. Prior to the experiments, most experts believe that only 1 to 3 percent of subjects would receive electric shocks. What to colleagues following the prompts on paper? Experts initially believed that only a person with advanced psychopathology, dangerous and irresponsible madness could commit such acts of sadism, in no case normal people without a criminal record but who were given power in their hands and were constantly pressured by an authority. Intransigent in carrying out orders, the 65% did not stop administering severe physical pain to their classmates. Even when in one of the cases one of the students asked his torturer to stop because he has heart problems and repeated electric shocks, they could kill at any time. It seems that people exhibit innate behavior as a result of which they accept without hesitation the most absurd and cruel orders if they come from an authority to which they cannot oppose. People tend to obey orders from people whose authority they recognize as a moral or legal right. The reaction of obedience to a legitimate authority is learned over the generations. From childhood when we listen to parents, grandparents, older family members, teachers and then bosses at work. In another communication session in 1974, Stanley Milgram explained the behavior of his subjects by suggesting that humans have two distinct stages of behavior when in public or in society. Thus when they are in the autonomous stage, people are free to choose their actions and consciously assume full responsibility for them. But in the so-called agency stage, people allow others to direct and command their actions in freedom but choose to pass responsibility for the facts to the people who gave them orders. In other words, people behave like servants of the desire of others. Milgram also suggested to his fellow psychosociologists that in order to enter the agency stage, people must recognize two behaviors. Namely that in which the person giving the order is perceived as qualified and entitled to act on their behavior. The next conjuncture is that in which the person receiving the orders is convinced that the authority will accept all the responsibilities of the deeds done jointly. These realities are supported by the results of Milgram's experiments. For example, when participants were told that they would be responsible for their actions, no teacher dared to torment their colleague. In contrast, when they were told that the experimenter was responsible for everything that would happen, people abused the electric shutter button despite knowing that it was causing pain to others. There have also been numerous criticisms of the experiments, some of which accuse the experiments of taking place in laboratory conditions, which raises questions about such an identical situation in reality. The truth is that the rest of the people are subjected without much hassle in their daily lives. To much lesser constraints than the threat of an electric shock, Milgram recreated situations are more suited to a military context than a civilian one. Which is exactly what he wanted to know about war crimes. Researchers such as Martin Tiorn and Charles H. Holland accused Milgram's studies of lacking experimental realism. Comma, as long as the subjects knew they would not actually receive any electric shock. However, Milgram's findings have been confirmed in many other cultures.
and some results have resulted in higher percentages of obedience to authority than in Milgram's experiments. In addition, researchers Peter Smith and Michael H. Bond discovered in 1998 that with the exception of Jordan, most of these studies were conducted in Western industrialized countries which does not mean that a social behavioral pattern has been identified that is valid everywhere on the planet. Milgram's direction was exceptional, as the teachers' subjects believed and were convinced that they were actually administering electric shocks to volunteers like them, letting them know that the students were in fact the teachers' students. Milgram also interviewed his subjects after the experiments to find out the percentage of their regrets. Apparently 83.7% of the subjects stated that they are very happy that they were part of the experiment. And only 1.3% said that I would have liked not to take part in such a thing if I knew what it was about. In his defense, Stanley Milgram also said that the side effects of the experiment on the psyche of the subjects will be short-lived. In fact, after it was all over and those who had the power to electrocute temporarily saw that their partners were well, healthy, their stress level dropped to normal as they feared possible retaliation. As it turned out the Milgram experiment left behind several new unanswered questions. Instead of deciphering all the mechanisms that target the complex relationship between ordinary people and dictatorial authorities, 